have said uh, if he were here at the table this morning, what would he say about the fact that this is um, one of the largest church going countries in the world or the highest percentage of people in the world that go to church? Uh, and also, that, uh, what would he say about our democracy? Nietzsche, what, uh, you know Karl Marx's famous uh, phrase, uh, religion is the opiate of the masses? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for Nietzsche, look, I can answer you in this way. Nietzsche wished to destroy Christianity and replace it with another religion, a religion of the superior human, the superior human being. In other words, Nietzsche's teaching is a very radical, uh, extremely rhetorical version of what's been going on in uh, modern Western Europe for the last 300 years. I mean, uh, it's a kind of uh, carrying out of Descartes, the French philosopher and mathematician's statement in his Discourse on Method, that science, and with it the correct philosophy, will enable human beings to become as masters and possessors of nature. That was back in the 17th century. Now, obviously, uh, uh, if we become masters and possessors of nature, that means that we throw out the previous master and possessor, and that's God. So, I mean, there's an intrinsic atheistic element uh, in modernity and in particular in the modern philosophical tradition. That's not to say that all modern people are atheists, but that has to be recognized. Nietzsche is another one, as was Marx, of those people who wishes to uh, allow for a superior, the development of a superior human being. And in order to do that, he sees that we have to destroy the culture that has produced the previous human beings. So that's, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, one part of my reply to you. Now, what does religion have to do with this? Well, the, re the previous religion, let's just call it Christianity, must be destroyed because the values of Christianity have been a, a major uh, ingredient, if not the major ingredient, in the preparation of corrupt people. I mean, now let's put some flesh on those bones so that your audience can know exactly what Nietzsche didn't like. He did not like weakness. He did not like pacifism. He did not like egalitarianism. He did not like Jesus turning the other cheek. He did not like Jesus appealing to the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and the halt. He saw Christianity, if I may put it colloquially, as a religion for losers. He wanted to uh, inculcate a spirit of warrior-like creativity of people who would not be bound by sentimentality for the average person or for the uh, the inferior person or for the disadvantaged as we call them today uh, for, to, to Nietzsche this would have all been sentimentality so he would he would not at all have been impressed by the fact that we're all going to church uh, the second point you asked about was democracy now this is interesting Brian because Nietzsche today is extraordinarily popular uh, not not simply among right-wing thinkers but among left-wing thinkers as well. I, I mentioned earlier in this discussion that there are, uh, our, our century, the 20th century, has been one of uh, any number of liberation groups. Uh, it's also been a, a century of uh, the spread of uh, democracy. Uh, it's been a century uh, of uh, uh, the spread of ideas of egalitarianism, fairness, and so on. I mean, these are terms that intellectuals in, in London or Belgrade, as we now see with excitement on the, on the television, or New York, all use with equal uh, frequency. Uh, Nietzsche was uh, really opposed to that. I mean, Nietzsche was what I would call a, a revolutionary of the right. He is confused uh, by, I think, many well-meaning uh, people from the left uh, because he's confused as, as a spokesman for, for their views because uh, he talks a great deal about uniqueness and creativity uh, and individuality and so on. But what he meant by that was that the Superman would have to create a new civilization such that the non-creative people, namely the great majority, would benefit simply by participating in it. In other words, by exemplifying the values of Nietzsche's morality, which would replace Christ's morality. I mean, uh, from a Christian standpoint, uh, Christians are uh, uh, obedient to the teaching of Christ. Nietzsche wishes to replace the teaching of Christ by his own teaching. One of the books that he wrote was called The Antichrist. <laughs> the last work he wrote Eka homo, you know, it's a biblical expression, behold the man. Nietzsche quite seriously uh, saw himself as a great historical rival to Christ. That was his ambition, to replace everything having to do with Christianity. And democracy, unfortunately, for uh, our own uh, taste, from Nietzsche's standpoint, democracy was, uh, was inferior. 
it was a kind of version of the sentimentality that one sees exemplified in Christianity. So those are my answers. They're not very pleasant, I'm afraid, to, to contemporary taste, but uh, those are the answers. Now, may I add that if you have five other people on your program, uh, you might get five different answers. I uh, don't think it's, uh, that they would be right. I mean, I think that Nietzsche was not a liberal. He was not a, a revolutionary in the, in the left sense of the term. He was a, a, a man who believed in rank ordering. As he often said, my key concept is rank ordering. He was a man who believed in the nobility, the nobility of the spirit. He despised the rabble, the people, the crowd, as he called them variously. He wished them no harm. On the contrary, he wished to raise them up. But the only way in which they could be raised up is by being trained properly, if I can put it that way. I'm speaking for Nietzsche, not myself. The only way in which the people could be raised up is by, give, by being given a proper education. I mean, this is not a notion that is foreign to us today. But the content of the education that they would be given would be quite different from the one that uh, obtains in modern uh, 20th century European democracies. So in short, anti-religious in the traditional sense, and by no means, in no sense of the term, a Democrat, as that word is used in contemporary political discussion.